Okay. Um, I got this. First of all, what's up, family? Shout out all over the world, wherever you may be. Thank you for joining me in the mental house. So good morning to you. Good afternoon. Good evening. Whatever time of day it is, I appreciate you and, and welcome here, right? I want to thank my subscriber, uh, Benita, for sending for sending me this article, which I really, really love. Y'all, we finally got a hot uh, few uh, weeks here in Milwaukee, in case y'all wondered. It's like in the 90s, 80s and 90s, so, woo! You know, we never get that kind of, we get three months of summer, y'all got to understand, and then the rest is like freezing, okay? So, but... I wanted to share this article with y'all that Benita sent to me, and it's actually kind of funny, um, but it ain't. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, it's uh, by a dude named David Lionheart or Leonhart, whatever. Anyway, he says, good morning. There are long lines for coronavirus tests. Tech companies are pulling back from Hong Kong, and President Trump's racial appeals don't seem to be working. This so-called Southern strategy, hmm, appealing to white voters by focusing on racial issues, has worked very well for the Republican Party. It's helped the party persuade many frustrated white working uh, class voters that the Democratic Party doesn't care about them. The do-nothing Democrats, the do-nothing Democrats. Like the star belly sneeches, boy, we fall for it all. Anyway... Richard Nixon's campaign invented the strategy, and he won the presidential uh, presidency twice. Mm -hmm. What about uh, George Wallace? I think that um, uh, uh, Donald Trump's uh, play comes right out of his uh, George Wallace's playbook, and George Wallace kept that playbook right up until he came to Madison and got popped. Anyway, um, Richard Nixon. So I don't think he invented the strategy. That's, uh, anyway, he won the presidency twice. Ronald Reagan praised states' rights in a tiny Mississippi county known for Ku Klux Klan triple murder. Uh, George H.W. Bush ran the notorious Willie Horton advertisement. I'm sure y'all all remember that. I think that's when he ran against what's the Dukakis, right? Yeah, I remember saying that, um, you know, uh, Dukakis let rapists out of jail. Right? So, I remember it well. I remember it well. Um, the Southern strategy has been the most successful strategy in history of modern politics. Cornell Belcher, a Democratic strategist, told me. He said that the, the basic bet has been that Republicans win when voters focus on race. Steve Bannon who helped run president's campaign, described the flip side of the idea in 2017 when he said, the Democrats, I want them to talk about racism every single day. Sure enough, Trump has put the race at the center of his re-election and it's at the center of his message. He did so in uh, two aggressive speeches over the uh, weekend and defended the Confederate flag on yesterday. Almost every day in the last two weeks, Mr. Trump has sought to stoke white fear and white resentment. Maggie Hiberman writes, uh, yet this time it seems to be a little different. The strategy isn't working. Trump's poll numbers are slumping and some of his 2016 supporters cite racial issues as the reason they plan to vote for Joe Biden. Because really, can't nobody take it. You can't take it with your foot on somebody's neck all the time. You need to breathe. And when you constantly, it's like when you live, live with a narcissist and you're dealing with the supreme narcissist, the government, and now you're dealing with um, a one that's racially motivated, they already sucked the room out, the air out of the room. And you're walking on eggshells or you can't breathe right as long as you got them in the house. You got to get them out or you have to go cold turkey and get from up under their grasps. That's the basic foundation of when you're dealing with narcissistic people. 
And so is it with a narcissistic society. You got to turn your back on this shit, this stuff. This stuff is insane. To keep people at each other's throat like this. Oh, of course we know it's differences. Of course it's, you know, it's, it's okay to be prejudiced. Sometimes we do judge before the fact. Sometimes y'all might judge me or say something because she fat. Or say something about that my sexuality. Or say something about whatever. But the bottom line is to not be antagonistic. And to try to hurt somebody because of it. That's where you get off the damn boat at. See? And then that's what Donald Trump has done. You know? And I do still believe that after living with y'all for about 500 years, we're not prejudging you. We pretty much collectively know that white people are a problem. Collectively. Um, because of just in, in no fault of your own how you've been programmed. And so you got to be deprogrammed. Um, and most of us that are learned black people and operate on the spirit of love, we know that. And we also realize that you are still our children. No matter how bad, no matter how arrogant, no matter how evil, I don't care what some of the, uh, the other uh, people say. I just believe, um, uh, like Francis Quirce, our great scholar, said that, um, and so many others, like uh, Leakey, Mendel, has said the um, Black woman is the cradle of all civilization. Now, Africa. So let's let's keep it real. You know, when you put race in, you run the whole campaign on it. At some point, it's got to run out. You know, this is why the Southern strategy is failing. I can count four main reasons. The country is changing. It becomes more racially diverse each year and most Americans under age 35 are quite liberal the horror of the George Floyd video and the ensuing protest have also changed the minds of many people people are afraid historically many white Americans didn't see how racism hurt them but he says now he hears white voters in focus groups say that they're worried that the country is coming apart they talk about it you know, and if we continue on this trajectory, it's going to be dismal for our kids, and we won't be able to continue. We can't. We can't breathe. Trump has gone way too far. Most white Americans remain moderate to conservative on immigration, affirmative action, and more. But many also believe police departments are biased, and many don't like symbols of slavery. Reagan offer an optimistic patriotic message that let many voters downplay or overlook his racial uh, appeals. Trump is practically forcing voters to take sides on racism. That's why I appreciate Trump. He drew the line in the sand. There's no more hypocrisy. No more of this oh, oh, everything is wonderful, oh, that's because I'm not in a target freaking group, right? Yeah, everything is wonderful when you're not in the target group. So, you know, the horror of, of, of what happened just changed a lot of people's minds. Um, they feel that George Trump has gone way, way, way too far. It says um, voters are simply too unhappy with Trump's handling of the coronavirus. And as long as that's true, the Times' Nate Cohen said, me, I don't see that he has the freedom to employ any wedge issues. Of course, the usual caveat uh, applies that the campaign still has four months left. So, um, as the United States nears three million coronavirus cases, um, many cities are still struggling. Or they're struggling with tests. And a lot of them don't have any patience for the missed messages that they're getting out of the White House. And most of them see Donald Trump's handling of coronavirus as a complete and utter failure. I don't know. What y'all think? Let me have your opinion. And do you think America is changing? Do you think that it, it really is changing? Or if this is all a smokescreen. I believe it's a reset of society. 
And I believe that if we have any sense, this is our last leg. If we continue to fight each other from within, don't you know we just weaken in ourselves for other countries to come and tear us apart? Because at the end of the day, I am an American. At the end of the day, my ancestors built this country. And I would hate for another foreign entity to come in and take over America because we ultimately can't live together. But I also know that America was an experiment. And um, maybe the experiment that was the hypocrisy of America is coming to an end. And maybe a real America will emerge. The kind that we all can feel good in. Y'all let me know. Tell me what you think about it. Um, if you like what you hear, like, subscribe, share. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.